All right, hello YouTubers, Benjamin here. I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily build a battery charger slash power supply for your 6L 7.2 volt NICAT or nickel metal hydride batteries. Now let me be the first to tell you uh, the disclaimer that obviously you are responsible for your own actions. This is an educational how-to only. And uh, if you don't know what you're doing, please seek the help of those that are more knowledgeable than you. Anyway, to get started, 7.2 volt battery. I have a cheap one here. It's a 7.2 volt, 1800 milliamp NICAD battery. The uh, when it's dead, it's going to be six volts. You don't want to discharge it any more than that. That's when that's when the battery has all all storage has been depleted. If you get lower than six volts, that's when NICADs go bad. Same thing with nickel metal hydrides and just about any other battery. When they're charging, the maximum voltage you want to get is between eight and nine volts. Nine being the absolute peak. You don't want to get any higher than that. Um, but if you maintain a minimum of one point um, four volts per cell or I'm sorry, a maximum of 1.4 volts per cell, then you'll be fine. Um, the power supply that I use is from a Sony PS2 Slim. You should be able to find them on eBay for ridiculously cheap. You can see it in here in the camera, Sony 8.5 volts. Now, open circuit, the way the switch mode's power supplies work is that on open circuit, they'll output a certain voltage this one says it's going to output 8.5, so it's probably going to actually output um, probably a little less than that. No, okay, that's not the case. 8.65 volts. So when you connect it to a battery, what's going to happen is is the voltage is going to drop, um, and that's going to drop to the terminal voltage of the battery. Now, for demonstration purposes, if I can do this one-handed, is I'm going to connect it up. We're going to take a measurement of the battery. The battery I just pulled off the charger, so it's probably going to be right around uh, 7.5 volts or more. Uh, we'll see. Uh, well, we shall see. Oh, okay. It is really charged. Ha! 8.2 volts. And I pulled this battery off the charger about three hours ago. So you can see this battery is actually still good. And uh, I've been using this charger for about two years now and um, clearly my method has uh, still proven well because like I said about three hours ago is when I took it off and this this particular power supply um, it's rated at 5.65 amps so not only will this power supply charge your batteries pretty quickly um, in about uh, 15 minutes to a half an hour to get a you know about 90 percent full charge because batteries never charge fully in, in that amount of time. All these quick charges you see and stuff like that, that only charges the battery up to about 85 to 90 percent, never higher than that, because the last 10 percent always takes a while, at least a couple hours. Um, you can find all kinds of research on the internet about that, but anyway. So for testing purposes, I have the meter here. I have the analog amp meter here. I'm going to connect up the power supply slash battery charger to the amp meter. You're not going to see anything, obviously. And then, see if I can't stuff these in. I told you this is not—it's not an easy thing to do with, with one hand. And we'll just stuff it in like so. And see if we can't stuff it in there. Okay. So you see the terminal voltage open circuit of the battery charger is still 8.65 volts. Like I said, you're going to see a drop, probably not too much, like I said, just because the battery voltage is low, is um, is already pretty high. So, all right, so the battery is, is fully charged, 8.63 dropped 0 0.02 volts, but you can see from the current meter, it's only drawing, um, it's only drawing 200 milliamps. So, yeah, it's still got a little bit left to go. But what's great about this right here is that you can leave it plugged in overnight for the next couple of days. It's not going to matter because this will not overcharge your battery. It's not going to exceed the output voltage or the uh, open circuit voltage of the power supply. It will not do that uh, unless there's a short or something. Then, then you'll just have problems. But the uh, Sony um, switch mode power supplies actually got some pretty good internal filtering and regulation in them to protect them from... Uh, 
catastrophic failure. They also, they, um, most of them also have an internal fuse. They're supposed to by um, IEEE regulations and CE regulations and listed regulations are supposed to have an internal fuse. But anyway, as you see there, 8.64 volts, it'll never get higher than that. Now, if you want to use this thing as a power supply, the base voltage is going to be 8.5 to 8.6 volts, but as soon as you put a load on it, the voltage is going to go up a certain degree, about 10% at most. Um, now, we'll also recommend, too, is that when you do plug these in, only have them plugged in when they are connected to a load, either a battery or a project or something you're working on. Um, switch mode power supplies, because of their very nature, they require a minimum load of at least 10%. Um, so in this case, on this one right here, it's going to be, um, if I have my numbers right, about 50 milliamps. I don't know you know. I may not be right here. And I may be wrong on my math. Let's see. 5.65 divided by, oh, that'd be 500 milliamps. Well, anyway, you want to have a minimum load. Um, something. Just don't, just don't leave them on, just don't leave them disconnected. But anyways, there you have it. You get a, a good battery charger that will not only charge your batteries fast, but it also keep them safe. You don't have to worry about overcharging them. And as you see here from my test setup, it's still drawing very low. Oh, this has gone down to 100 milliamps. So this battery is just about as fully charged as it's going to get. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them or message me if you like. Thank you.